up until that point, all my success was Puff's success. Like, so when he got a Grammy or when he got a Billboard Award, I would go up there and get it with him, you know, but it, went, it wasn't my award, you know. So once I had Feel So Good, it was like my first record that did really well for me. I grew up in Harlem, in Harlem, New York, on the 133rd and Lenox, and between Lenox and 7th Avenue, right in front of Candlelight, Chinese food. I thought I made it if I can get some Chinese food. I first known that I wanted to be a rapper when I was about 18, around 17, 18. Before that, I was doing it. Everybody would tell me I was good at it. I would ride the two train all the way up to the last stop just freestyling on the back of the two train. Then I would go to different schools, battle people at Truman High School. Around that time, it was like Bound Squad was the best rap group out. So I would go places looking for them because I wanted to battle them because I figured if they were the best and I could compete with them, then I would be a really good rapper. Most of my battles came on 125th Street in front of the Mart 125. Everybody who thought they were nice would come there. And that's kind of where I met the locks at. I first met Mason Harlem on 125th Street in front of the Mart. Skinny dude, sandals on with his feet out. You know what I mean? I didn't know what he was gonna do, but he was spitting. People be like, yo, where murder at? I come down the street with my Riverside church basketball jersey on, my shorts and my flip flops. And then I would just beat guys and rapping like that. If you bad well, you pick the wrong head. I smash mics like cornbread, you can't kill me, I was born dead. Big L would always win. Big L was like the king of Harlem. Peace to my peoples, the children of the dawn. He was the, the guy that win all the battles. We championed Big L. And then as I started coming up, I was like right under him. When I dropped out of school, I was living at my sister house because I couldn't stay with my mom's. My mom's told me, if you drop out, you're not staying at this house. So then I started living with my sister, Stacey. I was sleeping on her couch, you know, and she knew Kuda. Kuda was road managing Biggie at the time. We go to the Jermaine Dupree party, it's lights out, helicopters, you know. Back then, people were doing their super huge. Puff walks across the crowd, and Kuda, I think, turned to him. And it was like, yo, I got this artist. He was like, what's his name? He said, Murder. He's like, I heard of him. That's the guy that sounds like Jada Kiss, right? I said, sound like Jada Kiss. So Puff was like, yeah, just let the Lord rap. If he, if he nice, I'll sign him. If he not, we're going to get you out the club. So then I started rapping for Puff. Puff just started dancing. Everybody's looking at Puff dancing while I'm rapping. And then Puff just told me, when you get back to New York, don't talk to nobody. You're going to be signed a bad boy. And I got back to New York, and within like a week, I was on Only You. You can hum all you want to, s*** all you want to. Money, I'm going to front you. Girl, I want to flaunt you. Right. I'm going to always want you when nobody wants you. Uh -huh. First time I heard Mace was the 112 song with Biggie on it, and then they added this new rapper named Mace. Puff added for the remix. Mace, even to this day, his tone, his swag, his personality, he's just a, you know, he's a special cat, whether he's Revan Mace or Murder Mace, or, you know, just Mace from Harlem. Mace meant a lot to Harlem, just because he was like the epitome of Harlem. Like, he had the waves, he had the smile, he was flamboyant, he was stylish, he had the girls. Yeah, that's like every Harlem guy. So you remember at that time, I'm Murder Mace, I'm not thinking, no, hum all you want to, come all you want to. I'm like, they're trying to water me down. They're trying to make me soft. So we were young, you know, had ball heads. We had our skellies on, our army jacket, you know, heavily influenced by street rap. And he was like, Dave, if you do that, you're going to be in the clubs. You'll still be dope, but you're going to be in the clubs. But if you do this over here, you're going to have a worldwide appeal. And say, OK, I can't be the little boy no more. I got to really be a man about this and carry the torch for this, this label. He let you know that I was murdered. P. Diddy made me pretty. He was willing to do whatever it was to take it to, the, to that next level. 
lot of girls that I love to replace you. Tell it to your face, you're not behind your back. In 96 and 97, what you see is that, you know, being a bad boy artist and being bad boy means a very specific look and feel to your music, to your music videos, and to, you know, your subject matter. Mace really was sort of the child of that movement. At that time, it was so much dog stuff. We did not need another record to come out that wasn't party in front. And that was never a bad boy thing anyway. We weren't the aggressors. Everything we wanted to do, we wanted to get money. Puffy wanted to employ people, and we wanted to have a good time. I remember Puff came up to us one day and was like, can you do a party with no bad boy records? And we were, and we were at the radio station, and we were like, everybody looked at each other and was like, nah. Do it. That was what we did. You know, we, we made the party. The party didn't start until they started playing Bad Boy records. You ready, Mace? Party people in the place to be. Uh -huh. It's about that time. Going in to feel so good, when I first heard the record, I was thinking, this is different. Because it was like, The kids today, if, whether you're 16, 17 years old, if they heard it now, it's almost timeless. You know, like you could still have that same groove. And that's, you know, shout out to Cool in the Gang, because theirs was timeless. And all we did was just add a little extended warranty on it. You know what I'm saying? With our version to it, you know? Feels real good that someone would appreciate your music like that, you know? Recycle it. Yeah, it's great. All music is one anyway, I feel, you know? All music is one. You know, my mom played that through the house, so I was real familiar with that. And then, you know, when they first started playing it, you, you got the familiar, you know, if your head can move, let's use it. You know what I mean? And that's just what it was, just if people felt it, it was a go. And when I got the beat, it was like one of the last songs of the album. And I was like, what's gonna be the hook? Puff was like, don't worry about the hook, just write the verse. So then I wrote two verses that Puff was like he didn't like. And I was thinking, well, I really don't like the beat. Puff had a vision, and he was crystal clear on his vision. That's one thing about Puff I can say. He expresses himself very well when it comes to what he wants and how everybody can help participate in it. Yeah. Yeah. What you know about going out, head west, red legs, TVs, all up in the headrest. What you know about going out, head west, red legs, TVs, all up in the headrest. I wrote that to another beat and then put it on that beat. And then he was like, Okay, I always know when Puff likes something because he try to act like he doesn't. If you listen to Feel So Good, he's not just all pop and dancing and champagne. You know, he still kind of throws his jabs in there, keeps it a little hood, and he, you know, he it gave it gave him a, a new direction of like I can do this without always trying to be so angry. Mace could rhyme, rhyme his ass off, but he could give you that dancing, jump around, happy feel like he was able to sell it. That's why he was able to sell so much albums the first time out. Come you can't understand we be why Kiki sipping DP to the TV look greedy. Uh -huh. Little kids see me way out in DC. When we shot the the feel so good and we shot it in Vegas, it was it was lights everywhere. The third guy in the shiny suit is Chris Tucker. People don't really know that. And at that time when we was wearing the shiny suit I was thinking I don't want to put this on. It was the first time I saw it in aluminum. <laughs> he had somebody like me basically saying, listen, I'm, I'm not putting on a shiny suit either, but go with the flow, I mean, you know what I mean, and see where it takes you. I mean, it got to the point where he actually looked good in it. But I knew that it was Hype Williams, so I know Hype has a knack for doing funny and creative stuff. So then he was like, Mace, I'm telling you, I got you. Put this on, it's going to look crazy on camera. I've always had the really, really good ideas, and um, he was very into um, chrome and, and mirror and reflect silver, and things that things that pop, things that shine, things that reflected. Uh, very into that, so he kept doing permutations on that in a lot of his concepts. I remember shooting a video. I hated it. I wish there was some footage or a still of that when they said this what y'all gotta wear for this video. We just didn't expect it. It to be green, one piece, sequence, green, Kelly green, sequence, one pieces. So if you look back at the video, I look mad going like this. 
Like people don't really know. I'm like, man, this, they got me in this. <laughs> I like the shiny suit era because like as a kid, it's like looking at a cartoon with a bunch of different characters. It was innovation. You know, sometimes things happen for the good or for the bad, but it needs to happen because it's a change. And hip hop was experiencing a change. When you look back now though, it was all, I wouldn't have did it different. Like it was a beautiful thing. Like, it was all beneficial. Hello, welcome to the Bad Boy World Champion PGA Tour. I'm your host for the day, Mace Gumble. I would say Mace's musical legacy is pretty much cemented and, and planted in the music business. You can go to a club today or tonight and from 12 to 2, you're going to hear one of them Bad Boy records and specifically a Mace record and specifically maybe feel so good. You know, I'm real thankful that I got a chance to, you know, like, like, like that, was, that, was, that was my partner. Now, who's hot, who not? Tell me who got cool sell out in the stores. You tell me who flop, who cop the blue drop, who jewels got black, who mostly goes down. You know, like when you think of different duos, you know, me and Mace are up there, you know. I think it has something to do with who's at the top. When the top is a certain way, it makes the industry that way. And at that time, Bad Boy was at the top and it was all about having fun, looking good, you know. You know, driving good, smelling good, partying good. So it created a whole environment of that. Grateful to have a song that's, that I created 14 years ago <laughs> that I could perform now. Both were from Harlem, so we kind of slurred our words a little bit. So we, we just went and put that energy on the record. And go back to, you know, the essence and not just be, uh, person who was looking for something to complain about.